Friday's going? It's going. Yeah, I have my five, my four daughters and my son um, with me for First a few of weeks. all, pause, pause. Dondria, you act like I know you have five children. So that's just what now? Numbers, man, because I can count. We can say this for the pocket, no plan. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We know this. Like, <laughs> You're like, hold on, what? With everything you do, you continue to amaze me. <laughs> yeah, so um, I have seven kids um, total. Okay. Yeah, and I have um, five girls and two boys. Wow. Yeah, and I have five of my kids with me. Um, I have custody of one, and then my son is with me for a year. And then I went and okay. got my girls from Columbus, and we've been spending some some quality time together. Um, one of my daughters, she started her YouTube channel. She started her clothing brand. Um, but yeah, I'll talk about if you if you allow it in the podcast a little bit about how I manage my time and, and things like that. <laughs> wow! I'm telling you. Oh, here's a picture of them too. Wow! Oh, that's the crew. Yeah, that's the crew. Right. I'll be the last generation to start from scratch. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of babies. That's good. You know, yes. it's like you have those many babies. That's, that's what I said. When he said it's like we're supposed to either know or can tell. Sir, none of the above. None of and the above. Kind of right. You know, so you know all the kids. Count his coins. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. There we go. Right. <laughs> this is motivation. <laughs> Woo, love. There are some cultural things um, among. African Americans, but also African immigrants, that make us do what we do when it comes to money. And it is very hard being on the outside to understand those cultural nuances as they pertain to how we relate to money. So if I were working in a bank, if I worked at um, anywhere that has to lend money, or maybe I work for a credit card company and I'm on the phone, I'm always thinking, oh, black people never pay their bills. You know, if I even if I'm working at an um, an organization that is offering first home buyer classes, maybe I'm thinking, oh my god, the black people always need the, the state loan. You don't know the road we have traveled. You don't know our relationship with money. I remember my dad trying to buy a Camry in cash in a dealership he worked for, and they were like, bro, you don't have credit. You use this yeah. card to build your credit. It was his manager that sat him down and said, we don't do cash transactions like this in the U.S. for big ticket items. You're better off if you have the cash to lease this vehicle, knowing you'll never default on a payment and use this vehicle's payments to build your credit. We had never heard of such a thing. Right. Because back home, we're used to working with cash. So right. I kind of want to, you know, teach through, through you guys, like, how we can help our people. Surely I'll have a non-black audience, but this is for us by us, right? Yeah. It's for us yeah. as black people to see how similar we actually are than different because we bought into the narrative that African Americans and other black immigrants, not just from continental Africa, but from the Caribbean, we don't mix. Who said that to us? Why did we buy into it and why do we continue to live separately and operate separately? So this show is to Tell people we come from the same relationships with money, the same, you know, and if the journeys are different, we're working in the same system. So can we please try to bridge these gaps? Can we please start to trust each other to learn about money management <clears throat> and having better financial health? So it's kind of um, it's kind of difficult because black people maybe they don't even feel like they're entitled to what they get. Yeah. And you know. People are talking about entitlement, but they don't feel like they're entitled. We don't feel like we're entitled. And that right. is not true. Right. Whatever you get, I believe that you're entitled to it. You just have to manage it well after you get it. Yeah. Correct. Because that's why it falls apart. Because when you anytime you think that you're not entitled to something, you get it and you abuse it and it goes away. Thank you, goodies for the podcast. Thank you, goodies. Thank you, goodies. Yes. Yeah, it was getting good. It was getting real good. Okay, I'm going to hit record now. I'm going to cue us in, and okay. then we'll just start with the introduction, and and we'll build from there, okay? Please um, use 
whatever comes from your heart that you feel is relevant and helpful, uh, make it make it you. It, it's not going to be rigid. It's just going to be a chill conversation. All right, we are recording studio. Hey there, everybody. This is Christine, your host of Black and Black. Welcome back. I am so excited today. I am joined by Dondre and Anne, and we are talking financial health and wellness today, people. We are talking dollars, Black dollars, dare I say. And so without further ado, I want to get into it, learn more about my hope, my guests today and learn what it is we really need to know as Black people when it comes to money, finances, and financial health. 